What's up, people? Got a few thoughts on my mind. This is going to be a contemplative video. The title is real simple. Free business information versus paid. How to evaluate. But in the meantime, check this out. All right, let's get cracking. Let's get right down to it. There's a lot of chatter on the tube about free information versus paid information. Let me give you my new business model. My per hour rate is currently 300 bucks an hour. The hustler mindset is $59.95 per month and it's going to go up to $100 a month. That's what I'm doing. That's the new mindset. That's the new business model because I learned a few things. And to help you understand what I learned, you really have to look at it from this perspective because I'm going to ask you some logical questions and I want you to answer them in your own head, okay? What level of entrepreneur are you? Most people on YouTube are beginners, neophytes, newbies, and wet behind the ears. And then after you pass past that, you get past that point, then you get to intermediates. These are people who are making decent part-time money, could make full-time money, but for some reason they don't want to make that move. It could be family issues, it could be a personal preference. They have the knowledge, but they're just not ready to make that move. They may have a family member that has a medical condition and they can't afford to lose that reasonable health insurance. There's a lot of reasons that they're at that intermediate level and they have to have a job. And then there's me, advanced. I've not had a job since freaking 2000. I've not had a job. I've had a business. And if you can make a living, and it wasn't all gravy and it wasn't all six figures, there were some bruises, there were some bumps, but if you can make a living for over a decade as a self employed person, as a business owner, you are advanced. And part of that discovery, in part, it was one of those aha moments. It's like I was trying to give information to people that weren't ready for it. They couldn't deal with it because I noticed when I raised my prices, I got a better customer. Then I raised them again, and I got even a better customer. And then when I raised them again, I got a better customer. This comes from metrics in evaluating my business. Your business may be different, but I looked at the numbers of my business. I make love to the numbers of my business, and I look at the metrics every day. And it's more fun because when I sit down and I talk to a guy who's owned the store for three years, and I was like, hey, you need to do this, you need to do this, and he kind of understands and he sees that we're on the same level, it's a wonderful thing. I'm benefiting, he's benefiting, everyone's happy. But if you are a beginner and you don't have two fucking shillings to rub together, you're looking to get put on. And you're going to do anything you can because you're thirsty. I totally get it. I totally understand. And I've been there. But for you, this may not be the channel for you. This may not be the channel for you. I suggest you go to 2009, 2010, 2011 and 2012 videos because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt if you sit and absorb the knowledge that's on this channel you will make money no doubt in my mind plenty of people have done it and a lot of folks are going to continue to do it so let's really look at that many people are beginners and actually think that they're experts a lot of people in this space because everyone wants to be put on. Everyone wants that appreciation. They want, hey, you know, I'm doing something for people. I got letters and emails that would make you cry. But I don't share everything on YouTube because that's for me. And one day I'm probably going to print them up and just hang them up on the wall because that shit's fucking awesome. But this is to help you understand what's going on this is my new business model 
I'm a business strategist. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a hustler. I am not a picker. I haven't been a picker in over a decade. And you want to know why? Picking is easy to get into. It's very easy to get into. But it's hard as shit to make six figures picking. Unless you really, really know your shit. But if you're a beginner, and I'll give you an example. There's a person on YouTube who's saying, hey, there's a way to actually get a cash advance off of your credit card by using your square reader. Okay, this person put this on YouTube and it's free information, right? I'm going to put a link below. Well, guess what? That goes against every regulation, every guideline of any merchant account company on the planet. You are not supposed to use your own credit cards on your own merchant account. Nowhere. You can't do it with PayPal. You can't do it with, you shouldn't do it with Square and you shouldn't do it with a regular merchant account. And if they audit you or you run a very large transaction through there and they catch you, they're going to shut your shit off and put you on what's called a TMF, the terminated merchant file. And you will never be able to open up a traditional merchant account again until you clear that up. But that's free business advice. And the reason this guy's doing this, he's never He's never been in a certain situation. He can only give you information based on his perspective, which is really low. But to a really raw beginner, that's like, oh, wow, that's really great. That's awesome. That's wonderful. Because their perspective isn't there. There's a reason that people pay me 300 bucks an hour to 5000 for a consulting session. And it's not because of my good looks. I can help impact their business. And that's one of the reasons I pulled away because, you know, people are like, you know, what is Glendon doing? And how does Glendon make money? Glendon minds his fucking business. That's how Glendon makes money. If you did the same, you would make money. I do business strategy. I do product development. I do CRM. And if you don't know what CRM is, you are really, really, really a beginner. Because anybody with a sales background knows what CRM is. Everyone. Now, let's talk about some really good shit. How do you evaluate your source of information? I'm going to ask you these questions here. Would you go out with someone, hang out with someone, be a friend of someone for several months and not know their, their first or last name? Would you put good faith in someone the only thing you know about them is they have a fancy avatar and you see their face on YouTube here and there, but you don't know where they live. You don't know if they have a criminal background. You can't even do a Google check on them because you don't have enough information about who they are. Many of you are following people with passion, pride, and gusto, and you don't even know their fucking last name. Do this. Find out their first and last name. Everyone knows my name is Glendon Cameron. From day one, I have used my real name. I've never hid behind avatars and fancy little screen names. Number two, go to Google and search. Anyone that you're listening to, go to Google and see how many references there are about this person. Takes a few seconds. Now, if you go to Google and you can't find shit, but they've done all of these wonderful and big things and they're making all this money, you might have to go because success leaves clues. Success leaves clues. You are not going to, and this is the thing, you can't hide shit online anymore. You can't hide shit. It's like if you've done something, it's online. If you've done something good, it's online. If you've done something bad, it's online. And if someone tells you they got, you know, they canceled their eBay account and you see these letters in a art, non-authorized user, they didn't cancel their account. eBay shut that shit off. <laughs> so you, you just do a 30 minute search. Go to Google. Just really see who you're dealing with, because if you don't have their last name, that should be a big, big tip off to you. Seriously, you don't have their last name, you don't know who they are, and they, for some reason, they don't put that out on their videos. It's like, what are they hiding? Because see, if you get their last name, you know where they live, 
you could kind of reach out and do a little search. Because a lot of people love to friend me on Facebook so they can just kind of go through my friend list. That's one of the reasons that if you don't have an established Facebook account and you've got like two friends, I'm going to not accept your friend request because it's bullshit. And every time I, you know, when I used to do it before I wised up, nothing but bullshit happened from it because it was someone probing. Now, this is the thing. And this is, this, 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 this is big track record. Anybody that's telling you that they can make money, help you make money, and they're not going to charge you anything, look at their track record. What have they done for anybody? Look at the track record. I, 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 you know, because, you know, I'm going to say it, and, like, this is the deal. There's a lot of great YouTubers out there. There's a lot of great people putting out content. But if you go to their YouTube channel and you look at the establishment date, a lot of these new gurus have only been around in the resale business for six months. And really, you go to their hometowns, you look in the Craigslist, you can't see any of their ads for all the stuff they're selling. It's laughable. But see, I'm a nerd and I'm a metric and I look at this stuff because I'm like, hmm, that doesn't make sense. But many of you are fooled by a fancy presentation because y'all are boys. And also, there's a psychological effect. Birds of a feather flock together. No, seriously, it's a psychological thing. People are on, that you're on their level, you gravitate toward each other because you have similar in, in, energy. It's science. It's, a, it's science. You have similar energy. So, if there's someone you can't relate to, it's because their energy is different. And it's kind of like, in sports, they're like, yeah, I need to go play these taller guys so I can up my game. But on YouTube, there's this cram down effect, which is really crazy. Because anyone that's purporting to tell you how to make money online, but they don't have enough business experience that they can make enough money to live on from the information that they're giving you for free, that should tell you it ain't worth shit <laughs> if they cannot take care of themselves based on the information that they are rendering to you. And there's another thing. Big, big, big thing. Longevity. Anybody can be hot for a month, six months, or a year. Any fool can do that. Now, this is something else, and I did this recently. When I first came on YouTube in 2009, there was a bunch of people here doing storage auctions. You know, it was like, once the, well, once the shows came on. Because I was really the one that was hitting it high and heavy for about 14 months. Then the shows came on. Then, they were everywhere. People were like, hey, you know, I'm going to storage auctions. Hey, you know, me and the wife were thinking about, we're going to go to storage auctions. And there were all of these storage auction videos. And I kept track, because that was my niche. I had to see what the, my neighbors were doing. Did a research. 75% of those guys are gone. Gone. Out of here. Nowhere. So currently with this new big mm, thrust of, you know, in the resale business, today is February 26th. This time next year in 2014, I'm going to say 75% of the folks you're seeing right now and going rah, 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 will be gone. Because this is the thing, and this is, the, this is something that really helped me. I have built 10 businesses. The first five sucked ass. I fell on my face. I lost money. But those other five all made business and got better and better. And there's a vetting process that comes with that that you can't fake, you can't buy, you can't you just can't get unless you do it. Certain little things, like that whole thing where I'm looking, you know, there's a lot of people that will look at that guy. It's like putting with the square reader. And they're like, oh, that's cool. And they'll do it. And they'll know they're doing something wrong. He doesn't know he's doing something wrong. I'm actually going to comment on this video and let him know that is not going to fly. Your credit card company doesn't want you to do it. And Square doesn't want you to do it. And then they may shut your credit card off if they find out that you're doing it. That's how bad it is. So you, you really have to look at that. So if they don't, if you don't know their first or last name, you can't really Google shit about them. They have no track record. When you look at their videos, 
and they're using crappy, crappy camera. Now, this is not a knock on someone new. Everyone can't go out and buy a brand new camera or a brand new laptop. I get that. But if you claim to be making money and you have subpar equipment, when you can go to Target or Walmart and trick out for three to five hundred bucks on a nice camera, some lights, you making money, but you can't buy decent equipment to do videos? <laughs> you look at my first videos, they were shitty. The audio was shitty because I just started and I know what the hell I was doing. But for some, you know, when, when I learned, when I advanced my game, I went out and got better equipment. I got some nice shit. Because I knew I was going to be making a lot of videos and I knew that I needed better stuff. So look, look at what they're using to make videos. If you're making money, you're going to have some nice shit. Straight up. That's plausible, right? Also, when you're evaluating, if the their backdrop looks like a hellhole, I mean, you know, a plain wall will work. A green screen will work. If they didn't take the time to fucking clean up and they look poor as shit and they're on old country furniture and there's these ratty ass blinds in the background, but they making money, but they live in like damn near in poverty. Wonder about that. Question that. Really question that because I do. And that's one of the reasons that I use. That's one of the benchmarks I use to when I'm going to listen to somebody. Because if you're talking about you making money and you look fucking poor. I think you're uh, disingenuous. I don't think that's really going to fly because if you were making money, you'd look better. That's just me. That's just me. So just really look at those tips, kind of look at some stuff, and also check this video out, 2014, and see how many of those folks are still here. Now, let's really jump into the difference. I spent a grip of loot on going to a conference about two G's hotels and all this other stuff it was worth it I learned so much and the thing is I've always paid from Earl Nightingale actually I don't show my library but you know I bought this in the 90's it was a hundred bucks and that's like three four hundred bucks today that's you know, with inflation. I buy books all the time. I probably spend at least 20 to 100 bucks a month on books and stuff. Every month. This whole notion of, like, take this book. Good to great. This is a good book. I recommend it. I, you learn faster when you pay for your education. Now, this is something else, too, that's very, very important. If you haven't picked up on that, you could be that person who could be 50 years old and still doing the same shit you were doing 10 years ago. I have people who keep up with the folks in the storage structure trail locally. There are folks who are still at the same level they were before I got in the game, and they're still at that same level that have been at the same level because they haven't progressed. That's one of the core principles about anybody that's going to teach you how to make money. You need to progress. And this whole thing about, well, that's hot here and that's that piecemeal shit. You will forever be chasing the next great thing or the next trend and you will not build a solid business. At some point, you have to say, this is my business. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to work. And you can have side pursuits, but I see folks like, I'm all over here. I'm all over here. I'm all, you know, it's kind of hard to be centered when you're rocking left and right all the time. So go ahead, and I'm going to say this. Great people on YouTube. There's a lot of information. Watch the channels. Check them out. But understand that if you are not paying for your education, and you don't have to buy my shit. Let's just keep it real. My stuff's not for most of you anyway. That's just the reality. of it. It's not for you anyway. I mean, many of you just need to just unsubscribe for this channel because you can't rise to this level. You just can't because you are stuck on stupid shit like, well, Glendon won't give me some information for free. Who the fuck are you? You ain't my bitch. I mean, seriously, ask yourself if someone came up to you and you had some really nice information or you had money. and Someone's just like, hey, uh, may I have your money? You're going to say no. 
I mean, logically, you will. But I already did a video on that. I'm not going to get too deep on that. But the deal is, understand, and Brian Tracy, another guy I paid for some information, said 5 or 10% of your income needs to go to personal development. And I totally agree. I'm not even doing 5 or 10%, but I'm getting maximum benefit because you have got to cram new information in your head. You've got to stay abreast of current trends. You cannot just go, I'm going to go out there. Because let me tell you something. For all you pickers and resellers, y'all are about to be in for a rude awakening in about three years. Because all of you are helping out Goodwill and all these thrift stores. Because you think... You think you're the only guys watching this? No, because these stores are like, hmm. And I guarantee you, every store will have their own eBay ID, and they're going to start pulling all that juicy stuff off the shelves, and they're going to have someone selling it. And it's going to get harder and harder and harder for you to find good stuff at thrift stores. And why? Because you're helping them out from your quest for free. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm watching it because I read the comments. It's like, yeah, this thrift, their prices are going up. Yeah, because they're watching your videos. <laughs> Everything leads a clue. There's, you know, they're like, oh, and I'm, I'm, I really want you to think about it. I want you to think about it. You own a store, right? And you go to YouTube and you see someone's talking about all this stuff. And you walk around your store after it's closed and it's like, I have that, I have that. I have. You would be a fool to not pull it off the shelf and put it on eBay yourself. Come on. Come on, people. Don't be mad. Don't hate the player. Don't even hate the game. Because you are playing the game. You just are on the wrong team. All right. This is Glendon. This is my rant <laughs> for the week. Hopefully you pull something out of it. And seriously, ask yourself a ton of questions. I've been challenged for years. People have crawled all up in my background. Folks have called some of my friends. Folks are like, hey, what about Glendon? What about Glendon? What about Glendon? And I'll put this here at the end of the, you know, at the video for people who uh, actually get to the end because this is the good thing. I'm going to do a $100 challenge. What is my background? It's in the videos. And why did I get out of the business? Put that in the comments below. And then this time, what is today? Uh, this time next week, I'll cut up the comments, put them in the hat, and pull out a name. And whoever has those two answers correct wins 100 bucks. And if you're the first one to get the answers correct, I'll throw in another 50. Cash money. This should be interesting. And don't tell people to come to the end of the video. Let those bitches find this themselves. Just to show you how many people don't do their proper due diligence. Alright, this is Glendon and I'm out.